All right, today what we're going to be learning is how to find measures of center using data. So for what we're going to do first is we're going to be looking at Alex's test scores for the first semester in one of his classes. He got a 95, an 85, a 75, an 80, a 90, and a 95. And we're going to find the mean, median, mode, and range. Okay, so these are all our... Um, measures of our center that we're going to be working with today. So first of all, we got to figure out what all these words mean. And the first one we're going to start with is the word mean. And when we see this word, we want to think average. So if I asked you to, if we wanted to find the average height of our class, we would add up all the numbers and we would divide by how many students are in the class but working with test scores. So what we're going to do is we're going to add all the values and we'll be dividing by the number of values we have. So if we look here and we have one, two, three, four, five, six. He took six tests in this one class, so we're going to be dividing by six on this one. But we, in any of these, we would just any question like this, we would just have to add up how many of the numbers we have, and that would be the number we divide by. So let's go ahead and add up our numbers, our test scores. So let's line them up. 95, 85, 75, 80, 90, 95. So let's go ahead and add. We have 5, 10, 15, 20. So 0, carrier 2. Okay, now when we're going to add this line here, you can kind of add in whatever order you'd like. So I'm going to use some number sense here, and I know that 8 and 2 make 10. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of those when I add. And then I know that this 9 and this 9 are 18, so 10 and 18. Alina, Ali Khan to the front office. Your mother is waiting on you. Ms. Ali Khan, your mother is waiting on you. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so I said that 2 and 8 make 10, and 9 and 9 make 18, so that's 28. And then we have another 9, so 28 and another 9 would be, let's see, 37. And then 7 and 7, wait, let's go ahead and just make sure we know that. So 8 and 2 make 10. And then we have the 9, 9, and 9. What is 9 times 3? 27. It's just a little bit easier to do this with. And then 8 and 8 are 15. So I'm going to add those three. So that's 7 and 5. That's 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 52. Okay. So we have 52. All right. So now that we've added all the numbers, we're going to divide by how many scores he had, how many test scores. So remember, it was 6. So we're going to do 520 divided by 6. This is the number inside, this is the number outside. So remember, numerator inside, denominator outside. So how many times can 6 go into 5? 0. How many times can 6 go into 52? 8. So we subtract 48 because 6 times 8 is 48. Aka Alicon. Aka Alicon. Your mother is waiting on you. Aka Alicon to the front office, please. Sorry about that again. 52 minus 48 is 4. Bring down the 0. How many times can 6 go into 36? 6 times. Okay, we have a remainder, so we add a decimal and add a 0. 6 goes into 40. 6 times. And you can see that we're still going to get this 40 over and over and over. So this is going to be a repeating number. So our, our average is 86.6 repeating, but we don't really say that when it comes to test scores. So it's about 87, because it's closer to 87 than it is to 86. All right, so let's go ahead and now do the mode. So that was mean, now we're gonna move on to the mode. So the mode, this time we wanna think most. So in order to figure out which number we have the most of, we're going to put the numbers in order from least to greatest. Then we're going to find the number that appears the most. But we have to remember, there may be more than one mode 
or there may be none. There is none when no number repeats. So we're looking for a number that repeats. So if there aren't any numbers that repeat, then there's no mode. If there are more than one number that repeats, then we have to look at the one that repeats the most out of those numbers. And if there's more than one that repeats the same amount of times, that's when there's more than one mode. So let's go ahead and look at our test scores. So our lowest test score, we're putting them from least to greatest, is 75. Our next score, so I'm just going to kind of mark that one off so I don't accidentally mark more than one. Okay, so 75. And our next test score is an 80. Do we have any other 80s? No. So the next score we have is an 85. And the next test score we have is a 90. And then we have two 95s. Okay, now they're in order from least to greatest. Do we have any more than 175? Nope. Do we have any more, more than 180? Nope. So we keep looking through until we find one that repeats. And here we go. The 95 repeats twice. So that is our mode, 95. However, let's say that the 80 repeated as well. That would mean that we had two modes. We would have 80 and 95. But let's say that the 95, there were three of them and then there was two of them that were 80, then the mode would be 95 because it repeats more than the other number that repeats. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to median. Let me move the paper up so you can see the median. All right, median. When we look at the word median, we want to think middle. We're going to be looking for the number that's in the middle. So to find the median, we're going to put the numbers in order from least to greatest. Then we're going to mark off high and low values until we reach the middle number. However, there are sometimes there's two numbers in the middle, so we'll have to add them and divide by two because we want to get between those numbers, right, in the middle. So our numbers, we already ordered them when we found the mode, so let's just go ahead and reorder them. 75, 80. 85, 90, 95, 95. Okay, so let's go ahead and start marking off the high and low values. So what that means is you go to the highest number, mark it off, and go to the low number and mark it off. Okay, so we're going to keep doing that pattern until we reach the middle. Okay, so we mark off one high one, one low one. All right, I've got down to, if I mark this one and this one, I have no numbers left. I have to reach the middle. So we have a dilemma here. We have two numbers in the middle. So we have to find the number that comes between them. And so in order to do that, we take these two numbers and we add them together. So let's go ahead and add them together. 85 and 90. 5 plus 0 is 5. 9 plus 8 is 1. Oh, sorry, 17. So that's 175. So since we added two numbers, we're going to divide by two because we're trying to split it to find what's in the middle. So how many times does two go into uh, one? No. Two into 17? Eight times. How many times does two go into 15? Seven times. And we're left with the remainder. So we add a decimal, add a zero, bring it down. 2 goes into 10. Oops, sorry about that. I added the 0 up there instead of the 0 there. 2 goes into 10 five times. And then we subtract. So the number that is in the middle, our median, is 87.5. Okay, so that's how we find the median. Put them from least to greatest. Mark off until you reach the middle. If there are two numbers, Add them together, the two that are in the middle, and then divide by two. Now, 87.5 comes right in between 85 and 90. All right, last one. Let's go ahead and find the range. So when we see the word range, we want to think difference. 
So to find the range, we're going to put the numbers in order, again, from least to greatest. And we're going to subtract, because difference means to subtract, the lowest number from the highest number. And another word we want to think about with range is how far spread out are my numbers? That's what the range answers. It's, it's answering this question. How far spread out are the numbers? How far apart are the numbers from the beginning to the end? So once we put them from least to greatest, and we already did that for the mode and the medium, so let's go ahead and just copy down what you had from least to greatest. Okay, so we had 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 95. So we look at our high and low number, here's our high number, and here's our low number. And we're always going to subtract the biggest from the smallest. So we take 95, subtract 75, 5 minus 5 is 0, 9 minus 7 is 2. So the numbers, the range is 20. So it's spread out by a distance of 20 between the low one and the high number. Alright, so now we've figured out how to find the mean the median, the mode, and the range using Alex's test scores. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go through some examples and continue to find the mean, the median, the mode, and the range. So we have four examples that we're going to work with now. So again, if you if this needs a time to pause before we move on, this would be a good time to pause to make sure that everybody is on the same page, that they're done with their notes and they're ready for the examples. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I'm flipping it over. So example number one, we're going to find the mean, the median, the mode, and the range of the wind speeds displayed in the bar graph. And we were, that was really nice of them. They put the numbers where the bar graph is on the top there for us. So on top of the bars, we already have the numbers. So we have some different cities here, College Station, Corsicana, looks like Dalhart, Dallas, Laredo, and Marta. So with these cities, here are some wind speeds of those cities on a certain day. And we're just going to find the mean, the median, the mode, and the range. So to find the mean, you can go back and look. And what we're going to do is add up all the numbers. And we're going to divide by how many we have. So let's go ahead and do that right here. So let's just go ahead and make a little space for our mean. Okay, so we have 15, 13. So I'm going to line them up. 15, 13. 5, 10, 10, and 13. So let's go ahead and add those up. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 6, carry the 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 66. Okay, so now let's look how many cities we have because that's how many numbers that we added. So we added 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbers. So that's the number we're going to divide by. It just happened to be the same one that we divided by last time. So 66 divided by 6. We shouldn't have to do long division on this one. We should know that that is equivalent to 11. So the mean is 11. Okay, let's find the median. So to find the median, let's do that one up here. We're going to put the numbers in order from least to greatest. So our smallest number is 5. Next number. Looks like it's going to be 10. And then we have two of those. And then we have 13, 13, and then we have a 15. Let's double check that we got all six numbers. 1, 2, 3, wait, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yeah. All right, so here we go. We're going to start marking off high and low until we reach the middle. High, low. High, low. Uh-oh, we have two numbers in the middle. What do we do again? Add these two and divide by two. So 10 and 13 added together are 23. Now we're going to divide that by two. Two goes into two one time. Two goes into three one time. Add a decimal, add a zero, bring it down. Two goes into ten, five times. So our median 
is 11.5. All right, let's find the mode. This one we really already have our numbers from ordered from least to greatest. So we can just go ahead and write down mode. And I want to be able to do the range with a little bit more work. So I'm going to do the mode right here. I know this is a little bit all over the place. Sorry about that. Okay, so mode. We want to look at the number that repeats the most. So here's our least to greatest. We have 5, 10, 10, 13, 13, and 15. So I want you to think about, is there any numbers that repeat? Yes. We have 10 and 13. How many times does 10 repeat? 1, 2. How many times does 13 repeat? One, two. Okay, so that means we have two modes. Our modes are 10 and 13. All right, let's find our range. That's how far spread out the numbers are. So they're from least to greatest already up here. So we're going to take the smallest one and the largest one and subtract. So 15 minus 5 is 10. So our range is 10. So the numbers are spread out. 10 units apart. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to example number two. The table shows the ages of the students in a science class at a local community college. Find the median, mode, and range of the data. All right, so let's find the mean first. So remember, we add up the numbers and we divide how, how many we have. So we're going to add 20, 19, 21, 20, 19, 19, 35, and 18. Okay, so let's go ahead and add it. Oh, I see we have three nines. What is nine times three? Good, 27. Okay, and then I'm going to add one. That makes 28. Then I can just add these. So 28 plus 8 makes 30. Plus 5 makes 30. No, I just messed mess that up. Sorry. I was like, wait a second. What I just said does not make sense. So 9 times 3 is 27, plus 1 is 28. And then another 20, or sorry, 8 plus 28 would be 36. And then add 1, that makes 41. Okay? And if you want to go ahead and just double check it, that that is correct, let's just do it in order. 9 plus 1 is 10. 10 plus 9 is 19. 19 plus 9 would be 19. Um, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. And then 33 plus 8 is 41. So we're good. Okay, so here we go. 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. It's going to go ahead and reset just a little bit better. Okay, let's just double check that we added that right. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay, we're good. That's usually the part that most people mess up is just adding the numbers because we usually make a lot of silly mistakes. Okay, so how many numbers were there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we're going to take this number and we're going to divide it by 8 this time because there's 8 numbers. Okay, so this time this is not a known a math fact, so we're going to have to do the 8 on the outside, 171 on the inside. Whoops, I wrote 17. 171. So 8 goes into 1, 0 times. 8 goes into 17, 2 times. Bring down the 1. 8 goes into 11, 1 time. And we have a remainder of 3. So add a 0 and a decimal and bring it down. 8 goes into 30, 3 times. Add another 0, bring it down. 8 goes into 60, 7, and then we have 4, add another 0, I'm not going to bring it all the way down, 8 goes into 40, 5 times. So our mean is 21.375, okay, which is about 21 years old, so that's our mean, okay. Now let's go ahead and find our mode. So let's do our mode next. So let's order our numbers from least to greatest. So let's see, because it asks for a mode next. So we'll do the 
Oh, it also asks for the median. So we can do the median. Okay. So our lowest number is 19, because remember we're going to put these in order from least to greatest. So we have three of those. One, two, three. And then we have two 20s. And then we have a, oh, I forgot 18. That's our smallest. And then 21 and 35. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and remember median is the middle. So we mark off high, low, high, low, high, low. Once again, we have two in the middle. So we're going to take these two and add them and divide by two. But this one might be a little bit easier for you to see. There is, um, there is not a whole number between 19 and 20. Okay, so what number is halfway between 19 and 20? 19.5 because half of that one unit is 0.5. So our median is going to be 19.5. And if you were to add 19 and 20 together, you would get 39. If you divide that by 2, you would still get your 19.5. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our mode now. Since they're already in order from least to greatest, we can just use that. So as you're looking at our mode, we can see that we're looking for the one that repeats. Well, 19 repeats. It repeats one, two, three times. But 20 also repeats twice. So which one repeats the most? 19. Very good. All right, in the range. Our data is already from least to greatest, so we take our largest number and our smallest number, and we subtract. So our largest age was 35. Our youngest age <coughs> sorry, was 18. Go ahead and subtract. 15 minus 8, 7. 2 minus 1, 17. So our range is 17. All right, let's move on to example number three. Let me make sure that y'all can. Should be able to see it. Okay. So example number three. It doesn't tell us what we're going to be finding. It says the lengths of the pieces of lumber that a carpenter has are shown in the table. So what I would like for you guys to do is I want you to find the median, the mode, and the mode. So go ahead and do that. So pause the video for them. And go ahead and find the median and the mode. And then I'm going to um, press play again, and then y'all can check your work. So we're just doing the median and the mode. Okay, for median, we order the numbers from least to greatest and for mode. So that's why I had you do the median and the mode, because it has to be from least to greatest for both of those. Okay, so our smallest number is 1. So I'm going to put that one first. Next number, 1.5. Next number... 2, next, 3, next, 4.5, next, 6. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and mark them off. High, low, high, low, uh-oh, once again, they're in the middle. We have two. Okay, sometimes we don't have two, and they just end up having one number in the middle. So we're going to add these two together. So 2 plus 3 makes 5. And if we split 5 in half, how many 2's are in 5? 2. And there's 1 left over. So that's 1 out of 2. Or we say 2.5. So the median is 2.5. Now let's look at the mode. Do we see any numbers that repeat? No. So there is no mode. That's one that has no mode. All right, let's go ahead and work on number four. We're going to identify the outlier in the data. Then we're going to find the mean with and without the outlier. And we're going to describe how the outlier affects the mean of the data. Well, first of all, outlier, that's a new word. So outlier does not belong. So for our data, it would be something that doesn't belong with the other numbers. It looks, it's just different. 
It's too far away from the other numbers. It just doesn't match with the other numbers. So normally when you have data, if you have a good set of data, all the numbers are pretty similar to each other because that means you're getting consistently the same types of numbers. However, if you have a number that is like way out of the range, meaning this makes the spread of the numbers a lot larger, then you have an outlier. So it's a number that does not belong with the other numbers. So as you look at these test scores, this is another person's test scores. You have 82, 80, 85, 85, 82, and you have a 50. What number there does not belong? 50, correct. Because basically this person always makes a B on their test and then one day they fail. Okay, that just doesn't belong if they had a bad day. So that is our outlier. So we're going to find the mean with and without the outlier. So what that means is we're going to add all the numbers up and divide by how many we have. Then we're going to take the mean, or the, sorry, the outlier out and do the same thing and only divide by five that time because we're going to take this number out. So let's just go ahead and add them up first and see what we get. So all we're doing is lining them up. And we're going to add. So 5 and 5 is 10. 11, 12, 13, 14. 4 carry the 1. Okay, how many 8s do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, y'all know 8 times 5 is 40. So then we have another 5. So that's 45. And then a 1, 46. For 464. Remember, there are 6 numbers. So we're going to take 464. And we're going to divide by 6. So 6 on the outside. 464 on the inside. 6 goes into 4. No, it does not. 6 goes into 46 seven times. Bring down the 4. 6 goes into 44 seven times. We have a remainder of 2. So add a decimal, add a zero. 6 goes into 23 times. Oh, no, we have a repeating decimal. So we're just going to go ahead and say it's about a 77 is our mean with the outlier. So now let's find the mean without the outlier. So if we tag 464 with the outlier, we can just take away that 50 from the total. Let's just take it away because we don't want it in there. So it's 415, 414 sorry, without the outlier. So now we're going to divide by 5 because that's only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're taking this one away. So we're going to divide with this number now. Um, and if you don't have enough space, you can go ahead and maybe turn it over on the back. But I'm just going to go ahead and try to scrunch it in here. So we're going to divide by 5 because there's 5 numbers. 5 goes into 4, 0 times. 5 goes into 41, 8 times. Bring down the 4. 5 goes into 14, 3 times. No, it does not. 2 times. My bad. Almost 3. 2 times. And then we have a zero, bring it down. Five goes into 40, five times. So 82.5, which is about an 83. Okay, so this is the with the outlier, 77.3. And this is without the outlier, 82.5. So which one is really like the score that he normally scores? He normally scores a B, correct? So this is a better average about what he really normally scores. So what happened when the outlier was part of our data? What happened to our average? So what happened from his normal, what he should be scoring, versus what he what happened when we, we added that average or that fifty in there, the outlier and went down. So what happened? Hopefully you see that the score went down. Because this number is farther down from the rest. So when you have an outlier that's lower than the rest, it brings your average down. So if you have an outlier that's actually way above, let's say he normally fails his test, and then one day he gets an A. Well, that will bring his average up. Okay, so if the outlier is lower than the rest, it brings the average down. If the outlier is above the rest, it brings it up. So when we have an outlier, a better center of data would actually be to find the median, the number in the middle. Because that outlier that's on the end, it'll get crossed out, and it really won't affect our median as much as it affects the mean. So if we were to find the median, the number in the middle, so let's go ahead and line these numbers up from least to greatest. I'm going to do that down here. 80, no, 80 is our smallest. Then 82. 
And then we have another 82. Sorry, I forgot. Sorry. 50. We're including the, the, the outline. So 50, 80, 82, 82. And then we have two 85s. So if we start crossing out high, low, high, low. Oh, we have two 82s in the middle. Well, since it's the same number in the middle, the median is 82. So our median is 82. This number is more what he scores. So how does it affect, how does the outlier affect the mean of this data? It brought it down. So what do we want? When we have an outlier, you rather talk about the median being the center of data. All right. So that is mean, median, mode, range. And then we also talked a little bit about outliers. And that is our lesson for today.